All right, Jen, thank you. Well, next month marks the beginning of our fall migration for the monarch butterfly. Unfortunately, over the past few decades, the monarch population has greatly diminished, prompting a major concern about the health of our ecosystem. But there is something that we can all do to try to curb this trend. And joining me now to discuss is Derek Kellogg, uh, the director of animal care at Butterfly Wonderland in Scottsdale. Derek, welcome. Well, thank you for having me on. I mean, let's first start with the numbers. Can you give an, me an idea? of what we're looking at as far as the population of our monarchs. Yeah, so when you're looking at monarchs in the United States, you have two main migra uh, migratory populations. You have the ones that are to the east of the Rockies. These are the ones that are migrating mostly towards um, Mexico. Mm -hmm. Their population is usually in the single digit millions that can fluctuate from year to year. Back in the 90s, it would have been in the tens of millions, even close to 100 million. Uh, then you have the Western population, those in the Rockies and further towards the Pacific coast. Those have a tendency to overwinter in California. That's a much smaller population, but in recent years, it's only been in the single digit 1000s. Which is terrifying. I mean, what does that kind of a population decline mean for our ecosystem? Why are they so important? So one of the things you can think about is that monarchs are really great, um, biologists like to call it a keystone species. Mm. So this is a species that uh, if its population is declining, it's really easy to tell because they're such large, beautiful butterflies. If it's in trouble, there's going to be a lot of other species that are in trouble as well. Because they're pollinators. Exactly, they're like pollinators. Like this guy that you brought for us. Well, this one isn't a pollinator. It's this one's a actually a predator. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Wildly but different. This is, this is one where it's going to be impacted by the same pressures. Okay. So when you're looking at uh, monarchs and their pop population decline, it's going to be primarily from things like habitat loss and pesticide use. And those same exact things are going to affect the, uh, this species as well. So this is a giant vinegaroon. And they're indigenous to Arizona. We only have about a minute left, so let's get moving with this guy. Yeah. Tell us about this. So this is a giant vinegaroon. They're actually native to right here in Arizona. And he's not hes not a danger to people, right? Not at all. So one of their common names is sometimes called a uh, whip scorpion. Okay. That's because they look kind of like a scorpion, but except for the tail, which in a true scorpion is going to have a venom tip on it. These guys just have a sensory tip. They can't hurt you at all. They don't have any venom. Worst they can do is spray you with like a vinegar-like substance. That's how they get the name vinegar room. Okay. But otherwise, they're not able to hurt you at all. But they're predators. So they'll go around eating up some of the insects that would be around your house, and they can actually be really beneficial. They're so key, and I don't know if he's going to like my butterfly wings or not, so we'll find out. But tell us about the milkweed, because I want folks to be able to get involved and help the butterfly population, which we can do, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we have over here a few different types of milkweed that you can grow right here in Arizona. Although, especially with the migration coming through, it's sometimes a good thing to cut back your milkweed during migration because it can affect their migration behavior. Then also to this side, we have a couple of different types of nectar plants that you can plant, things like land Montana and Baja Fairy Duster, where the butterflies will sip on that, especially during migration, they'll come through, pick up a snack before heading further south. And it's so easy to do. This is something families can do, kids can do. We can do it in our backyard. We've got the weather for it, starting October to about March. That's when it's good for us to be planting milkweed and then trying to help boost that butterfly population, correct? Absolutely. Some of these, like the desert milkweed, you can even keep them going through the summer as long as you give them a little bit of water. All right, Derek, thank you so much. I think I'm going to keep your little buddy here. All right, well, <laughs> I guess my job's done here then. <laughs> okay, well, don't bring it over here then. <laughs> Ginger, right. how is your arm not shaking? Uh, not at all. I mean, look at it. Pound for pound, who's going to win this fight? <laughs> right? If something smells no, like vinegar he's a later, we know. beautiful creator. So uh, I love this kind of stuff. And I love sharing that with you. And again, I've, I've grown milkweed for years. So uh, do it, folks. It's just amazing what we can do. Our role in the environment. Mm. Well, that, that says is good he morning, smiling? doesn't it? I yeah, think my, he's smiling. My money's on Ginger, though. She's right. Yeah. <laughs>